It's the Capitol Police chief who led the force during the January 6th insurrection is revealing new details about just what happened that day in his new book. Excerpts were first reported by The Washington Post. Stephen Sund echoing a story similar to what we have heard in the last two years, that he was never warned by the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, or by his own intelligence unit that armed protesters who were willing to shoot police could descend on the Capitol. Not a failure of intelligence, a failure of communications. Washington Post national investigative reporter Carol Lennick is the author of that Post story and joins us now. Carol, thank you so much. So take us through some other highlights that you found inside this book, including Stephen Stun's anger as he wasn't getting the reinforcements he needed as shots were being fired at the Capitol. That's right, Andrea. I think you zone in on exactly the most newsworthy part, which is former chief Stephen Sund, who ran the Capitol Police and was in the command center on the day of January 6th, watching his department essentially be beat nearly senseless, uh, was begging, begging Pentagon generals in the Army to please send National Guard reinforcement. He had gotten the reaction that he found shocking, almost sort of to the point that his blood was running cold. The reaction he got from Lieutenant General Walt Pyatt was he did not like the optics of the National Guard coming that day. Keep in mind, Andrea, this was a call made, uh, a conference call between the mayor's office in D.C., the Pentagon, and the chief of the Capitol Police and the chief of the Metropolitan Police Department 20 minutes after rioters had broken inside the Capitol. Um, the Lieutenant General Char uh, Charles Flynn, brother of Michael Flynn, also said it would not be his military advice to send these uh, National Guards folks to the Capitol without a clear plan for how they would be used. This was, again, stunning to Steve Sund and stunning to other people on the call. I will also say that one of the things I found the most striking in this new book, um, you know, I had written a lot about January 6th and specifically interviewed Steve Sund for this account in the past. But one thing that I learned that was brand new was that while he was begging the National Guard to come and save his officers' lives on the Capitol grounds, the military had beefed up security, he says he learned, for various senior military brass's personal homes. Now, those homes weren't under attack in the D.C. area, but that is where some of the security went to sort of um, harden the line around top brass individual homes. Now, Sun was also controversial among some of the witnesses who testified, um, I think, the year before last, actually, um, to that Senate committee led by Senators Klobuchar and Blunt. And he says now that he regrets resigning the day after the riot, after Speaker Pelosi called for him to step down. Can you expand on his thinking about that now? You know, he, uh, the, the book relays this in great detail, and I'll um, be concise. He learns uh, from one of his staff members that Speaker Pelosi's other staff member has relayed she will call for his resignation in a few moments in a news conference that's about to happen. Uh, Chief Sund at that time is sort of flabbergasted. It's basically the day after the riot. He's still in recovery mode, trying to make sure injured officers are being treated, trying to do an after action report. And now he's learning basically there's almost no chance that he's not going to be asked to resign. And he wonders, will he survive such a request? He decides in a, in a great deal of, I think, feeling of responsibility for what's happened, that he's going to step down and offer his resignation rather than fight it. But unfortunately, at that moment, what he doesn't know is how little has been shared with him. All of the things that came into his intelligence unit, all of the chatter of domestic extremists planning exactly this attack, Andrea, and how much of it was known weeks before January 6th by the FBI, by the Department of Homeland Security, and yet none of it was flagged to his attention. That includes uh, intel that individual extremist organizations were sharing maps of the underground tunnels at the Capitol and proposing ways to seize those tunnels. Number two, that they were planning and urging each other to come armed and to be, quote unquote, prepared to draw down on cops. 
And then finally, that they were proposing harming and targeting individual leaders, such as Speaker Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader McConnell. And none of this was related to him or to some of the senior people in his department that could have done something about it. So he felt sort of um, a little bit depressed about having resigned when he didn't know how much he didn't know.